Hello and welcome to the Ice Guys, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now, Tuesday, January the 3rd. Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith with you, ready to break down the Tuesday uh, NHL slate. It is a massive one. We have a whopping uh, number of games to take uh, apart and look at here on the slate. 11 games in the NHL tonight. We'll break those down. We'll give you a little recap uh, of Monday's action. Uh, But first, it would be ignorant. It would be uh, certainly not uh, proper, in my opinion to not address uh, what we saw last night in the NFL game. Um, This is a moment where life, human beings, empathy, compassion, uh, just human decency has to take over and becomes more important than sports, more important than any one individual game, more important than betting and whether you're side and your total cash to winning bet. At this time, you know, we, we got things put in a proper perspective last night with what happened to uh, DeMar Hamlin, uh, of course, of the Buffalo Bills. And um, look, I happened to be on the air doing a live NFL betcast with uh, Pub Sports Radio. Of course, many of you know that I do a bunch of shows with their channel. And many of you know, too, that I'm not just a hockey guy when it comes to hockey uh, betting, uh, when it comes to sports betting, I should say. I'm not just a hockey guy. And when it comes to fandom, it's certainly not just hockey. I love hockey. It's probably my number one sport. Uh, and it's certainly one that I've done well betting with, but uh, I'm a football guy. I'm a baseball guy. I'm a basketball guy, uh, very much so as well. Uh, and I was on the air doing the live bet cast last night. And um, it's one of the more difficult things I've had to get through, honestly. And, you know, your body shuts down. Uh, all thoughts about, wow, what a great football game this was going to be between Buffalo and Cincinnati gets just completely thrown out the, the window. It's all about this young man who's 24 years old was born in 1998, who's now fighting for his life. And as I said on Twitter, nobody should have their life at risk at that age. No one. Uh, and it's, it's it's heartbreaking. It's gut-wrenching. And I'm still, whenever I think about it today, waking up, it's a new day, and still in knots thinking about whether this kid's going to survive and whether he's going to make it. But to see the response from the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals in particular, who couldn't have acted more classy, more you know compassionate, in a very difficult time last night, the, the Zach Taylor, Joe Burrow, the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals, bringing the captains with him into the Buffalo Bills locker room to lend their emotional support to the team for their fallen comrade, uh, DeMar Hamlin. It was just everything that was right about the world. It reminds you that the world still has good people in it. It reminds you that, the, you know, something good can come uh, out of a very difficult situation. Uh, and we definitely uh, saw that. Uh, last night in that game and all we can do now is just uh, well wishes for DeMar uh, and all the best to his family and the Buffalo Bills and his teammates and we hope he pulls through this the ESPN folks couldn't have done a better job especially Scott Van Pelt and Ryan Clark their interaction after they went off the air at the stadium uh, in Cincinnati and went back to the you know Stanford Connecticut studio for Sports Center. they couldn't have hit a better tone than they did in terms of just compassion truth you know what takes precedent at a time like this it's the man's life it's his family it's the team it's not about winning a football game it's not about cashing a bet anymore it's about making sure that demar hamlin is great and another thing that proves that this world still got you know it's shit together even though we know there's bad seeds we know there's people that do horrible things and people there'll be some people that will continue to do horrible things and say horrible things there's no question But you see the whole community, the football community, fans from different teams, fans from all over the world, essentially, piling on financial donations to DeMar Hamlin's charity for giving toys to underprivileged kids in his little town outside of Pittsburgh. And he raises money to get gifts to these young kids who may not be able to afford it themselves. And the fact that everybody jumped on that cause during DeMar Hamlin fighting for his life to DeMar's cause, knowing it was near and dear to his heart. And they pushed that donation amount up from like, I think it was 25,000, 30,000 or something. I think last I checked, it's now a 3.5 million. Think about that. $3.5 million to DeMar Hamlin's uh, charity 
uh, that just shows you this world's got plenty of good in it still. And that's what you got to believe in. And just we hope, DeMar Hamlin, you pull through, my friend. Uh, Alex, that was one of those nights that you never hoped to see it. And it's it's surreal. Even the very next day, you know, it's it's a weird feeling coming out of last night. Yeah, you know, we've seen watching sports for as long as we have. We've seen instances of, of players collapsing, of course, with injuries. But uh, very rarely do you have something of this series. It, it made me think about Rich Peverly and Jay Bowmeister in, in hockey. Those the last two where we saw and Yuri Fisher. Fisher. Yeah, yeah, Yuri Fisher, and then going yeah. back, uh, even Chris Pronger, which I forgot about, saw that clip this morning. But we have seen instances of players having cardiac arrest. Uh, Comio Corio which is a uh, basically blunt trauma to the, the the chest area that can you know stop the the rhythm throw the uh, the heartbeat rhythm off timing and these instances can happen and it's just very scary and you never get used to it and you know as someone who for me I watched sports played sports but also having parents that were in the medical background so whenever something happens of an injury setting it, you know, I, that kind of always clicks in and I'm, I'm here watching this game last night with my mom and she goes, you know, this is way out of the normal. And the, you can see by the EMTs and the, the training staff, the way that they rushed to him and, and even the players reaction, they know this is different. This is not your average injury. This is something way more serious. And, you know, props to, to both of the training staffs and, and the EMTs there, uh, University of Cincinnati Hospital, which, which is regarded as a, a really good hospital. The fact that they're that close, just, uh, you know, less than two miles away. And we're able because when you're talking about uh, someone's heart stopping, you're you know you're talking about seconds and minutes. Every second and minute is precious in that kind of time frame. So, and it, it's just difficult to watch as, as a fan. And like you said, you know, as big of a game as this was for these teams and playoffs and you know betting and fantasy and all the things that are big in every NFL game, they all go away when something of this magnitude happens. And, and you know, this, the the players, their brotherhood, their family, yes, their, their own teams, but football players you know, gather around each other, they're a fraternity, just like hockey players, basketball players, baseball players. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what uniform you wear, you are a part of a fraternity playing that game, and you know the risks that can happen with this game, but you still aren't prepared to see it, even though you know that that these are, are possibilities that can happen. And it's just, it's very tough and very difficult. And so my thoughts are with him, my thoughts are with, you know, the Bills fans and players, uh, the Bengals players. I mean, to be on the field, you know, everybody, you know, T Higgins was part of that hit. Uh, you can't imagine how he how he feels, uh, you know, seeing that over and over and knowing, you know, well, you know, I was if this was a two person collision that could have easily been me and, and, instead of uh, of Hamlin. So there's a lot going on and, and just, you know, it's just just really heavy and, and it's hard to think about sports the way we do when you see stuff like that. I mean, you know, it, this is what we do is business, but that it becomes personal in nature when you talk about someone's life. Uh, hanging in the balance. So just hope that uh, that he can pull through and that everything will be okay. And, you know, the other, uh, you know, the other business, we'll get to that later. But right now the business is making sure that Hamlin's going to be all right. No doubt. No doubt. I didn't like that it took them as long as it did to finally postpone that football game. And I said that on the air last night. It was insane it took that long yeah. to just make the common sense decision. But eventually they yeah. did. I mean, at that time, it's very simple. Your yeah. heart, your your conscience, decency has to take over. Uh, compassion yeah. for a fellow man has yeah. to take over. Finally, it did, and the and, right decision was made to postpone that game. And and like you said, at the you know at the same time, everyone's trying to be as compassionate as possible about the situation. But there are logistics, business wise, that have to be done, and they have to be yeah. done in a quick manner. And when we're talking about this game, this is for the number one seeding. You're talking about you know one of these two teams possibly were were planning to have a week off after the season beginning. There's a lot of things logistically that, of course, like I said, it doesn't mean anything. It's not the the most important thing happening at that moment, but it is still a, of an importance, and they have to kind of you know plan that out. You know, getting the the team back to Buffalo, for example. Now that you know the statement came in in the last ten minutes saying that they won't resume that game. Now they're going to go on with, and of course, this happens before the, the end of the regular season. So there's a lot of other things that, like I said, they aren't of, of the most utmost importance at this moment. It, it's not number one, but it is important enough where the league has to juggle both of these things. So you can't be too harsh on the league. This isn't a, oh, they're saying dust it off and get back on the field kind of thing. No, there, there's a lot more on the back end that I think people don't realize right away that has to be done before you just say, we're calling off this game. There's, I mean, there's, you know, you got a stadium full of 60, 70,000 fans in attendance too. You have to, to, to juggle just that kind of thing and getting people out. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot more that I think people don't realize until things like this happen. You know, you don't realize how much is goes into 
putting on a sporting event until you have this kind of instance and all of a sudden the training staff and, and all the people that just kind of seem like they're on the sidelines, they become the focus and that changes everything and it changes how you view uh, a game from, from, you know, night to night. Yeah, it, it, no doubt. Um, uh, like, like we say, and of course you're right. What well, the game will not be resumed this week. That's probably the right call as well. And look, some, somehow they'll figure it out and I don't know what it's going to be, but they'll figure it out when they're going to play this game, if they're going to play this game, whatever. But the bottom line is that's not the utmost concern right now. The utmost concern is the health and uh, hopefully DeMar Hamlin pulling through. And we certainly hope he does. And Absolutely. LB Patrol in our chat. Shout out to the paramedics. Who prefer, yeah, ex- uh, absolutely. Everybody that was involved administering, uh, you know, CPR, you know, intubation. You're right. Transporting him to the hospital as quickly as possible uh, and making sure that they could get some sort of assisted breathing for him. Uh, you know, once his uh, breathing stopped, you know, on the field uh, and they got that as to him as soon as humanly possible. And you can't commend those folks enough for the job they did. EMTs, paramedics, everyone involved. And I, I would I would implore anyone watching this program, listening to this po- program, if you can take a CPR course, they're, they're very inexpensive and you don't need a, a medical background to learn this and to possibly save someone's life. Because if it wasn't for, you know, people who are trained to do this being there, we'd be talking about a, a casualty. And, and these things happen in all walks of life at any moment. So that's something I really would implore. It's something I need to to brush up on personally myself and uh it's it's never a bad skill uh to have Uh, it's something i definitely would would implore anyone to look look into and i know a lot of people have talked about that they said there's been an increase of people signing up for these since last night so it's something to to really kind of think about on on a personal level yeah no question about that it certainly could save someone's life and look we don't even know if it saved Demar's life yet because he's still fighting for his life he's still in critical condition right now but the bottom line is we don't get a chance to see him pull through if not for the actions taken immediately on that football field last night. At least he's got a chance, and, and that is what you hold hope to right now. So thoughts and well wishes to DeMar Hamlin, and as difficult as it is to turn the page, we will do our best uh, to do that now uh, and to get back to uh, hockey. It's not easy. That's, that's about as difficult a transition as you can make, but uh, we uh, will press on now with – talking a little NHL. And uh, first of all, uh, yesterday we did see uh, the Winter Classic take place with the Penguins and the Bruins. I'll be honest, bit of a snore fest, I got to admit, you know, for especially the first two periods uh, in that hockey game uh, yesterday. It was just uh, pretty dull. There, there was The pace wasn't really up to snuff. The crowd was pretty quiet, too. It's like very stoic crowd. Uh, it was just there was a lot of neutral zone play uh, throughout uh, the first two periods of that game. It certainly was a thrilling conclusion, though. Because uh, Boston ended up tying it up 1-1. Uh, and then, of course, they got the late goal from Jake DeBrus to go ahead 2-1. And Pittsburgh, I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh played a really good game. I thought they had a bunch of chances. I thought they, you know, the times they, for a large part of that game, in fact, they carried the play to the Boston Bruins. And Linus Allmark had another Vesna Trophy contender type performance yesterday in that game. He was immense, once again, for the Boston Bruins in that and just when you think the Penguins, it looked like might have tied the game late, the the, the shot taken by uh, Evgeny Malkin does go in, but after time expires, uh, and the Boston Bruins hang on for a, a two to one win. The other two games, uh, Vegas, I got to admit, very impressive uh, against Colorado uh, because they were beaten up like crazy on the blue line. We talked about that yesterday, uh, but they still beat the Colorado Avalanche, who are suddenly now there's some concern. Like you got Nate the Great McKinnon back the last two games, and you're still losing. You know, and so Colorado is definitely they need to get their uh, ass in gear and, and they need to get going now because this is uh, becoming a concerning little skid that they're on uh, right now. The good news in that game was we did come through once again with our guy. I mean, unbelievable. Michael Amadio scores again for the Vegas Golden Knights last night, plus 500. If you had that at Bet 365, even at other books, you got it more than plus 300 at most of them. Uh, another goal score prop casher with him. And you keep riding it at this point. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's now five goals for him in the last eight games. It's been an incredible run uh, for him. He's playing excellent on that line with St- Stone and Stevenson, no question. Logan Thompson was spectacular. Because Colorado was really close to tying it on a couple of occasions, but Vegas found a way with a beaten up blue line. And even up front, you know, there's no Eichel, there's no Marcia. So very shorthanded team. 
And to go into Colorado and still win that game, it was uh, very, very impressive. No question about that. Uh, and what else did we see? Yeah, we saw Philly beat Anaheim 4-1. Very frustrating to have the over in that game. Philly does the, they score a bunch. I knew they would. I was thinking Anaheim could, but sure enough, they could not. And Samuel Harrison's playing well. That's another good start for him uh, in net for the Flyers. And Philadelphia has got a nice little three-game win streak. They haven't had many this year. I think early in the season they might have had one. But uh, Philadelphia three-game win streak on sweeping California. How about that? San Jose, L.A., Anaheim. They win all three games, Philadelphia. And look, you know, Cates, Morgan Frost, Scott Lawton, Owen Tippett. I mean, these are all the guys that are uh, – Philly, I mean, right now their offense has found some life, and that's made all the difference in the world for them. And Anaheim still stinks. I mean, what else can you say other than that? Uh, Alex, uh, thoughts on the uh, three games taking place on Monday? Yeah, we – these outdoor games, I mean, we, we talked about it yesterday. They probably need to go away. You know, let, let's, let's, let's maybe, you know, let's have a couple more. Obviously, they're going to do Seattle and Vegas next year. Let's get all the teams out of the way. I think this, after that, there's Columbus and Florida and maybe, like, one more team I'm missing that haven't played one. Let's get everybody to play one in a couple of years, and let's kind of wind this this whole thing down because these these games are not the selling point that the NHL thought they would be. They were cool for a while. The novelty's worn off. As you mentioned, they have the stadium series that, that comes in as well, and, and it's just – this is not inspiring hockey. And right now, that matchup, to waste that matchup of Pittsburgh and Boston on that kind of a grand scale. Now, a two-to-one game, it was a good game. And, you know, it probably would have been a more exciting game if it was played at TD Garden or, or PPG Paints Arena. But to have it be the focal point and the whole TNT, and it, it's, just, it's just not worth it anymore right now. Unless you and – you, and you can't schedule – you can't just put two teams in, in that are exciting and say, oh, here we go with, you know – uh, you know, a great marquee matchup because think about it. At least if you listen to what I was saying at the beginning of October, this would have been a snooze fest anyway because we thought Boston and Pittsburgh, at least I did, were going to be bad teams. That changed, you know, changed. Obviously, they're in good good standing, but it just wasn't a good game. I think the novelty is worn off. So that that's my takeaway from that. Had the over with that. Didn't didn't come close to it. I'll pretty much fell asleep in the second period myself. So uh, as far as the night games go, was really upset with, with Vegas and Colorado not going to OT. I knew it was going to be a tight game. Uh, Vegas getting the, the road win, which that's a, a big deal for them. And these are two teams that still, like I said, once they get healthy, they're going to be in good form. And the teams that, you know, we we'll definitely see uh, making noise in the second half of the season. As for Philly, Anaheim, didn't watch much of it. But like I said, Arison was another good start. And maybe he's a goalie we can ride on for just a little bit of time. But as more tape is coming out, I think we're going to see kind of like a Spencer Martin thing with him. You know, Spencer Martin came out in, in relief and stepped up and played well. and had some great starts. All of a sudden, we just saw him kind of crater back down to earth. Martin Jones, a guy who had been struggling for a while, had a great run, came back down to earth. I think we might see that. So, Arison might be a bet on guy for a couple more games moving forward. But then as more tape uh, comes, comes available, we might start to see him kind of just regress back to it. Not to say he's going to just be awful. Uh, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all, but he might regress to form. So I'd say tread lightly, just automatically jumping on, oh, Erickson's a net at a, with the Flyers at plus 200. That's a bet on spot. Not necessarily, but we might get some more value moving forward in the next couple of stars. Exactly. That's the one thing you worry about the young goalies. Once the few games under their belt and then the workload increases and they get a little worn down too, and coupled with the fact that the opponents know the weaknesses and the tendencies of the goaltender a little bit more, and all of a sudden you're not able to sustain that level of play long term. So that's going to be the question moving forward, certainly for uh, Samuel uh, Erson uh, in net for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers uh, moving forward. Before we get to Tuesday's massive card, I do have to bring this up. And look, we had to start the show talking about Ham Hamlin and uh, the, the, the obviously tough situation, but we, we do want to provide a little levity now uh, at this point of the show. And uh, the levity is going to be the one, the only magician that is Connor fucking Bedard, folks. I yeah. mean, what on earth was that last night from yeah. him? I mean, yeah. the first goal was a thing of beauty. Uh, he shatters the record for the World Junior Hockey Championship with Eric Lindros, beats his point record, uh, and then, of course, beats the goal record of Jordan Eberle uh, at, for all, all time at the World Junior Hockey Championship. So he beat both records with that first goal. And if you thought that was good uh, already, uh, well, great enough for the game last night and his performance, uh, that and that by itself was good. Wait till you saw what happened in overtime. Uh, just an incredible hockey game it was. Slovakia and Canada uh, but in the quarterfinals of the World Junior Hockey. First of all, shout out to Slovakia. They absolutely gave Canada everything they could handle. It was a terrific game. Yes, they got badly outshot and 
chances and all that were heavily in Canada's favor, skewed toward them. But they they, they didn't give Canada anything easily. And the goaltender for Slovakia was just absolutely sensational. And Connor Bedard's overtime goal is going to go down as one of the more iconic goals in the World Junior Hockey Championship, especially if Canada goes all the way and wins gold uh, this year. Because there they are on the ropes in overtime. Slovakia is one shot away from you know, eliminating Canada and moving on to the semifinals themselves. And then all of a sudden, Bedard says, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. I'm taking over. I'm the best player in this tournament. I'm going to end it right now. And I'm going to end this game and give my team the victory with that unbelievable dirty dangle deke move, double deke, round the defense, around two guys, backhand deke around the goalie and in the net. It was a sensational goal. It was just fitting of the moment to win in overtime and have the goal be that spectacular by Connor Bedard. And now the legend grows. I mean, if you weren't already excited about the potential of this kid uh, at the NHL level, um, what are you going to say now? So with that in mind, I have a salute and a tribute to Connor Bedard. Uh, score a goal in overtime. It's getting to it. Get stupid. Get bedarded. Get bedarded. Get bedarded. Let's get bedarded. Ha! Let's get bedarded in here. And we were getting bedarded uh, <laughs> last night with Connor Bedard. Uh, sensational stuff, yeah. Alex. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's, Grinch mentions it in the chat. He does the Patrick Kane heartbreaker celebration, which – Man, would I love to see him do that play, that goal, and that celebration in a Hawks uniform in about a year from now. I mean, this kid is absolutely electric. And, you know, as someone who doesn't watch a lot of, of junior hockey, I don't really follow the World Junior Championships often. And most people who know me know I don't really watch so much international hockey. But to when you hear about the hype of somebody going number one overall, or, and you, you always wonder, okay, well, you know, yeah, okay, number one, but is he going to pan out? Is he going to be Patrick Kane? Is he going to be – not to knock him right now, but Alexis Lafreniere, you know what I'm saying? You, you wonder if this guy's really going to be worth the hype, right? He seems to be worth the hype. And and, and it reminds me of, of the same feeling when they were talking about Connor, Bedard, or, or Connor McDavid, the same feeling talking about Patrick Kane, the same feeling, you know, talking about uh, Mark Andre Fleury when he, when he was going first and for a goalie to go that, that high, it, it, he, he definitely seems worth the billing right now. And he definitely feels like he would be a franchise changing player. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be interesting, you know, the end of the year, we're always going to obviously talk about the teams that are fighting for playoff positioning, but it's going to be just as interesting watching these bottom barrel teams, something we really haven't been able to say since uh, McDavid was going to go in the draft, who, who's going to be the worst team in the league, because there's some really bad teams. And, uh, you know, they almost have to get themselves into position. It's like teams making moves to get themselves in position to make a wild card or win a division or, or make a run for the cup. The Hawks and the Ducks and the Sharks and these teams gonna have to make some moves to really be like, hey, you know what? If we're going all in on Bedard, we got to lose as many games as possible. You might start seeing guys getting moved just on the sheer fact of, you know, the full tank in progress. You know, you, you might see guys who are average and mid-range and probably could stick around and make a team next year. They get moved to get somebody's minor league garbage just so they can secure more losses. I mean, that that might actually be a common thing, and that plays into the betting role. Like I, I mentioned it yesterday, you know, we're probably going to see some minus 500, minus 600 favorites at the end of the year. If we get a Colorado playing, a, a, you know, a Anaheim late in the season, when Colorado's trying to get, you know. Minus uh, 750? Could it be? Yeah, exactly, right. You got, you got Colorado's back trying to, to clinch the division, and Anaheim's trying to get as many losses as possible. So this this does affect the betting line at some point. And so it's, it's something we're going to see. And I think we're going to end up seeing more moves happen maybe a little earlier before the, the trade deadline as a result of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, how is the dynamic going to be for your, your bottom feeders uh, in the national hockey league down the stretch, March and April, San Jose, Anaheim, Chicago, uh, Columbus, Montreal, although Montreal is far up there. So, but you got to maybe take them out of it, but Columbus, they're certainly in the mix. Uh, in the East, and then there's all those other, like Chicago and Anaheim, San Jose, Arizona even a little bit, even though Arizona's played some better hockey lately. Uh, is there going to come a point where it's just, you know what, this kid, uh, and, and by the way, with Connor Bedard, he's not going to save a franchise, and he's going to not make them instantly a contender, but you know what he will do for what, what the team that gets him? He'll speed up the rebuilding process. That's what he will do. All right, he's not going to be the savior all by himself. No. He's obviously instantly going to make that team much better. He won't just single-handedly make them a playoff team or a Stanley Cup contender, but man alive would it ever speed up the rebuilding process that a team is going through, where it maybe initially you're looking at three to five years before you really become competitive again. You could be competitive in the next two years 
potentially again if you get a guy like Connor Bedard. So it'll be fascinating dynamic down the stretch with the bottom feeder teams in the NHL, how they approach it. Uh, let's see how we approach this Tuesday NHL card. We're going to get into it right now, and we will begin with Columbus and Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa minus 220, home favorites, six and a half being the total uh, in this game. The uh, Blue Jackets, I'll tell you what, they lost seven straight games. They snapped it with a four to one win against uh, Chicago uh, in their last game. I don't know how much you want to make of it. I mean, it was against the Blackhawks, but fact is that, uh, you know, you've been. Uh, Challenged to score goals. They are struggling offensively. Scoring four goals is actually a a, a big-time outburst, if you will, lately for the uh, Jackets. But Brad Larson saying we needed it. We needed it for team morale. So the next uh, challenge for Columbus is trying to now put two wins in a row together, something they have not done since December 9th and 11th, almost a month ago. So that ends up being the question here uh, in this one. As far as Ottawa is concerned, they've won three of their last four. Um but again, these games were very close. 3-2 win in a, in a shootout against the Bruins, which is a very impressive win. But a lot of the impressive portion of that victory was Cam Talbot and Ned. It was spectacular facing 51 shots. Uh, they got pretty well outplayed, but Talbot, one of his best games of the year. And then they uh, beat Washington uh, in overtime, 4-3 uh, in their next game. Uh, after that, they lose 4-2 to Detroit. They blow a 2-1 to lead. And then they bounce back, though, the very next night against the Red Hot Sabres going into that game. And Ottawa gets a 3-1 to workmanlike win, although that was not Buffalo's best game. Kind of caught Buffalo after a big emotional win uh, Saturday afternoon uh, against the uh, Boston Bruins. But nevertheless, I mean, definitely you give uh, Ottawa credit for that. If you actually look at these two teams here uh, recently, Columbus has actually won three of the last four meetings in Ottawa. All right. And three of the last five head to head meetings have gone to overtime. So I'm telling you what, I am tempted by a Columbus double chance in this game. And this is like a soccer type of bet. It's not something that, you know, I typically do a lot when it comes to the NHL. But this is one of those times when I would be interested, you know, in something like that, where you could bet Columbus or draw at around even money plus 100 here uh, in this game. Um, uh, look, I know. Columbus, there's questions about, was that just beating on a bad Chicago team at home to snap the losing streak? But you know how I feel about when you snap a losing streak, a long one, you sometimes get a little momentum. And this is just more, are we ready to buy into Ottawa's minus 220 home favorites? For his, I know they've won three of their last four, no question. And look, the uh, Jackets going into this game are going to be having uh, Patrick Lyonet returning. Uh, to the lineup, which is obviously significant. It looks like he's going to end up uh, returning, being on the ice uh, and being in the lineup for the Jackets tonight, scheduled to rejoin the top line with Johnson and Goudreau uh, for the Jackets uh, in this game, which is obviously significant. They're still without three defensemen, obviously, Bean, Wierenski, Blankenberg, Boone Jenner's out. We talked about that. Vorchek, Danforth, Shinnikov uh, certainly have been banged up as well. It looks like it'll be Jonas Corpusalo, a solid performance, again, against Chicago against Chicago. I get it. But a 27 save performance. Uh, he only gave up one goal uh, in that game. Uh, it's Anton Forsberg back in net for Ottawa after getting them the victory against uh, Buffalo. And he was pretty good. 33 of 34 shots he faced. Uh, he'll see if we can uh, get that going. The one thing that does concern me here is Columbus is obviously on the road, pathetic two and 12. So that is not good, but this is just more, and this is a small, small bet. So don't go crazy on it, but this is just, I don't, I don't trust Ottawa as a minus 220 favorite. I don't, flat out. So, And Columbus has had a decent track record of success in this building. Three of the last four they've won in Ottawa. And a lot of games have gone to overtime or a shootout. Close games with these two teams. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. Columbus or draw, which, or Columbus double chance, whatever you want to call it, plus 100 in this game. So if Columbus wins, I cash. If the game goes to overtime, regardless of whether they win or lose Columbus, I also cash. So that's the benefit of making that play. What do you think here, Alex? Columbus, Ottawa. That makes total sense, and uh, probably would sprinkle a little bit on that, but I, I feel a little bit more comfortable with the draw here at plus 375, and this is a, a good price. These are two teams that have really kind of struggled, and Ottawa, they deserve to be a $2 favorite, really. You know, they just, they just kind of they flounder back and forth in, in games that they should win, they lose. It, it's just too tough to look at a side. It's like I said, it would be Cologne's or nothing, but I feel more comfortable with the draw, so I'm just going to play the draw personally at 375. All right, draw plus 375 here for Alex uh, in this one. It certainly feels like that's ah, probably going to be a close game either way. The series history uh, talks about, and even Ottawa, you look at their games. That was an empty net goal to beat Buffalo. 
blow the game against Detroit 4-2, uh, overtime shootout and overtime, three consecutive games that went beyond regulation before that. Uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, Ottawa not winning games easily. And that's the issue with them at a minus one. Uh, 220 type of price tag here tonight uh, in this game. I like Lion A props as well. Getting back and Johnson as well is worth a look. Bemstrom might even be worth a look. He scored the other night. Those are three props I like for Columbus in this game. Uh, Ottawa, Stutzla's worth a look. Uh, anyone on that second line of Debrinket, Pinto, and Batherson, that line's been rolling for Ottawa. You could look in those directions as well for props in this game. All right, Buffalo, Washington. We've got Washington minus 165, home favorite, six and a half the total uh, in this one. Uh, Sabres, of course, had their win streak snapped by the Ottawa Senators, as we just talked about uh, on Sunday night. They'll be looking to get back into the win column. It was their six-game win streak coming to an end after dropping a 3-1 decision to Ottawa Sunday night. Washington uh, winning uh, six of their last seven games, six and one their last seven. They're playing some excellent hockey. And look, they took advantage of a, we talk about it repeatedly since the break, decimated Montreal blue line which is just filled with inexperience and guys that probably are more well-equipped to be playing at the AHL level right now uh, than the NHL level. And they just demolished the cap uh, the, the uh, Montreal Canadiens nine to two uh, in that game. And I swept the board with the bets in that game. It was puck line, first period puck line team total on the capitals. The game went over the total as well. Uh, it was a really good game for yours. Truly. Um, you know, Washington's scoring a bunch of goals. I do like this game over the total, honestly, six and a half. Uh, that's that definitely is a bet for me. I, I, I kind of pumped the brakes though about taking Washington again tonight. Uh, you know, they're minus 165. Kemper is going to be in net. It looks like TJ Oshie might be back as well, or at least game time decision is what we're seeing. Oshie has missed the last six games. And look, they finally th dispelled the notion that they can't win without. Uh, TJ Oshie. I mean, a lot of those games they did win, uh, obviously, uh, without him during this six and one stretch. But it looks like he might be back. He's a game time decision tonight for this game for the Washington Capitals, uh, making an already potent offense the way they've been scoring lately even more dangerous. Um, but uh, still, obviously, without John Carlson on the blue line, looks like Haglin and Wilson, you know, the usual suspects. And of course, Baxter, we haven't seen him yet uh, this year. Uh, on the Buffalo side of things, it's really Yoka Haru. Uh, is the main absence on the blue line for them. Uh, everybody uh, everybody else uh, pretty much healthy for this team. Um, more so the over I like. Um, I'm, I am, I'm actually tempted by Buffalo, but I don't know if I will. I I do like the fact that they're going back to the a red-hot UPL in net. Don't sleep on the performance lately of Uko Pekalukanen for the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, he is now 7-3 and three this year. His overall numbers, believe it or not, they still don't look good. 3.44 goals against, 893 save percentage. But there were some awful, awful games for him uh, early in the season. He gave up 5 to Toronto, 6 to Tampa, 5 to Colorado, 4 to Columbus. They skewed his, you know, they skewed his numbers for the overall season. If you really uh, dumb it down and you look at just the last five starts for Uko Pekalukanen, the Sabres have gone four and one in his last five starts, and he has given up three goals or less in all five starts. Uh, and he has been very good lately for Buffalo in net uh, going into this game tonight. So uh, I think don't count Buffalo out. And Buffalo does seem to get up for the big the big teams. We've seen that. We saw that against Boston. Uh, but I don't know if I want to step in front of Washington either, the way they're rolling right now. So I like the over uh, a little bit. And even that's with UPL playing well, but he is going up against a team that's firing on all cylinders right now offensively. So I, I do like the over, kind of tempted by Buffalo. Kind of could think the Washington team total could hit again. Like I'm all over the place with this game, but I definitely will be betting this game over the total and looking at some props. Someone on the chat already mentioned some Washington props that are probably worth a look. I mean, you know, the big guns are Ovi and Kuznetsov and guys like that. Uh, for, and Oshie, obviously, if he comes back for the uh, Washington Capitals. But I'm uh, Shiri is worth a look. Gustafson on the blue line. This is insane what he is doing all of a sudden for Washington. The last seven games, this guy has six goals. All right. Six goals in the last seven games. And he has got he's on a seven game point streak as well. Three, five, six, seven, nine, ten, thirteen points in those seven games as well for the uh, Washington Capitals. So if you can find Gustafson props, Shiri props. And, and you, someone else mentioned someone, and it's he's down the lineup, but it's unbelievable what you're getting offensively from him right now on the fourth line for Washington. Tricky Nicky Dowd for the Washington Capitals. 
what he's doing here since the last the last six games. He's got four goals and he's got six points in the last six games for Washington. That is a bargain bin right there on Nick Dowd for the uh, Washington Capitals. Uh, no question about that. So uh, absolutely, I think there's value there. Buffalo goes without saying. You could go a bunch of different routes. Cousins is one of my favorite in terms of value props right now for them. But, you know, consider, you know, anybody, Tuck Skinner, Thompson, uh, Paterka, Quinn. But Cousins, to me, is the guy that I think is the most undervalued right now. Uh, he's been excellent. The point streak's been great. It's chipped in goals. Uh, good prop game here, Buffalo, Washington here. Alex, what do you think, Sabres, Capitals? Yeah, I think this is one of those spots where Buffalo can step up and get a win here as a dog. Uh, you know, the Capitals, and the Capitals are obviously playing good hockey. They are warranted to be in this price range, but I still just have my doubts with them. I have lingering doubts with Washington long term. And, and Buffalo is a team that I feel that can kind of get back, like I said, with UPL and that. They think they're getting him right at the spot that they want him. Uh, and this offense is clicking well enough or where this is, this is, these are the kind of games Buffalo needs to win to, to make that run toward the playoffs. And I think this is a, a big game, a big, a big road contest. And I think they can kind of, this is where they harbor more of, of the energy, uh, and momentum from that buff, that Boston win. And then if you can beat a team like Boston, Boston's way better than, than Washington still in, in my rankings. Then you can, you know, take that that style and, and beat this this Caps team. And we've seen the last two meetings go to OT. We've seen some close battles. I don't like the draw on this one, uh, even though I do feel like this could be close enough where it goes in OT. And it's a plus three fifty, plus three fifty five. But I like Buffalo here. I'm taking Buffalo on just a, a straight up money line, plus one forty five. I think ah. this is a good spot for them, uh, backing them to get to get a, a road win against a, a quality team. I think I got to bust out some tragically hip lyrics after Alex made that recommendation on the Sabres. Do you want to twist my arm? <laughs> Little Gord Downey there, yeah. I think you're twisting my arm right now. Uh, and I, because I, I, I want to take them. I'm tempted yeah. by Buffalo. And I, I lean that way for sure, plus 145. And I you've bet Buffalo more than I have this year, yeah. it seems like, on, on the money line. I've backed them a couple of times. But I think now we're getting in some, some really good spots. And we're not going to get these plus prices. They win here tonight. We're not going to see plus 145, plus 150 on them probably for a while. Yeah, I agree. And they're playing well enough right now. No question. Uh, yeah. But, and by the way, I want to point out something too. Uh, uh, by the way, four of the last five meetings have gone over the total. So that enhances the over uh, recommendation that I like here. But I know it's going to show four and one Washington head to head last five meetings against Buffalo. It was a four, three win for Washington. It was a five, three win for Washington with an empty net goal, a three, two shootout win for Washington and a four, three shootout win for Washington. Like Buffalo has been tough on this team. They really have. They've been the close competitive hockey games uh, recently uh, between these two teams. So yeah, Buffalo plus 145 for Alex. And I think he might've talked me into it as well uh, at the uh, underdog price here tonight. All right, next up, we've got Arizona and Florida, Florida minus 350 home favorites, six and a half the total uh, in this game. I mean, I'm on Arizona first period, Arizona money line. I'm doing it. I've got no, no reservations, no hesitation, uh, whatsoever to, to take Arizona in a split first period full game money line here. Florida minus 350 is not something that that's bad for your health long term. That's bad for your bankroll uh, long term right now. I thought this team was talking the talk, maybe ready to walk the walk. No, uh, because the only win they've had in the three games since the Christmas break was that win against uh, AHL defense. The Laval Rocket blue line was playing that night uh, for the Montreal Canadiens in that uh, seven to two win for Florida. Uh, other than that, they get blanked by Carolina 4 nothing, and they lose 5-3 out of the New York Rangers uh, in their last game. Uh, flat, Not a team I'm trusting, flat out uh, right now. Uh, I know they're finally, Paul Maurice, going to Spencer Knight here, uh, and obviously I like that more than obviously the, the, you know dealing with Bobrovsky again. But, but Knight's got to find it too. I mean, Knight's given up 11 goals in his last two starts, including the seventh spot. He gave up a touchdown against Boston. Uh, just recently. So he's got to step it up too, Spencer Knight. I think long-term, he's still going to be the better guy than Bobrovsky from a, from a performance standpoint. But, you know, right now uh, it's definitely a situation where very much concerned here with uh, the Florida Panthers uh, going into this game, just laying this kind of astronomical price. Uh, there are some, yes, there's no doubt uh, Arizona is without Nick. Well, they were without Nick Schmaltz on Saturday uh, against Tampa Bay. And we know how immense he's been for the, uh, Arizona Coyotes this year. And this uh, kid that's also played well for them, Matias Michelli, 
Uh, three goals, 19 assists. He's out for six weeks. They still might get Schmaltz back tonight. So it's not a confirmed for sure that, it, uh, that, that Schmaltz is going to miss another game for Arizona. And keep in mind, without Schmaltz against Tampa Bay, don't forget, Arizona jumped out to a 2 nothing lead against Tampa Bay on uh, New Year's Eve uh, on Saturday. Uh, they, they gave light the lightning fits. In fact, it was about to be 5-4 Tampa Bay, but they took the goal away from Arizona late in that game. They're about to make it a one-goal game against the Lightning. I thought their effort against the Lightning was very commendable. Talked about how Arizona, could they be able to keep, bring the home cooking, the home success from the mullet with them on the road? Very admirable in defeat is what I consider that against the Tampa Bay Lightning the other night. So, uh, yeah, this is just for me, Just it's a small bet on both because, you know, Florida is desperate here. I, I expect Damn well better see a sense of urgency from Florida. But, man, minus 350 for this bunch right now. That only The only win in their last uh, six games was against the Laval Rocket, essentially an AHL hockey team, especially on the blue line. No. So, for me, I know Arizona's not a given. Uh, and on the road, even though they fought against Tampa, they ended up losing. Fighting and competing is not going to cash a ticket. I get it. You got to win. But this is just no. Florida minus 350 in that price range for me, no moss. And I like the over in this game as well, because I think we're going to see Flo Florida's that that's the way they're playing right now. Florida's going to have to score goals. We don't trust their defending. We don't trust <coughs> their goaltending. And don't look now, Arizona, how about uh, six and two to the over in their last eight games between these two, uh, going into this one, six and two to the over. So I also think we'll see plenty of goals here, Coyotes and Panthers. Uh, Alex, what do you think here, Arizona, Florida? Yeah, I like the over, but this is one you can wait for a lot. You can get this down to at least six, if not five and a half. And, and then once you get five and a half, lay a price, $1.20, $1.25 is fine. That's the way I'm going to attack this. Like I said, uh, Arizona, yeah, they're giving the effort, but that doesn't translate out to wins. Florida needs to play this team as if it, they're not the worst in the league. Uh, they they need you know some to string together some big wins. They need a, a, a another seven to two win like they were able to put it against Montreal, and they should be able to do that against Arizona. They are skilled enough to do that. It's just a, a question of, of motivation and drive right now with this Florida team. I don't like what I'm seeing from them at all, uh, so it's hard to back them in anything. So I, it's just going to be an over for me. But I'm looking for it live. Anything at five and a half is a, is a go for me. All right, looking for maybe a live over here in this one. And a couple props here to mention uh, on this game uh, when it comes to the uh, Arizona Coyotes. Uh, obviously, if uh, you know if Schmaltz doesn't play, you're going to have to look for other sources. You know, Travis Boyd's capable. Michael Carcone, they've moved him up to the top line. I think that's value on the uh, Arizona side. They put Michael Carcone right now on the uh, top line for them, uh, for the uh, Coyotes. He didn't score the last game, but he had three shots on goal. It was very noticeable. Uh, Jack McBain, who had a two-goal game against uh, Arizona, they put him on the second line. So those are two you could look at for Arizona. For Florida, you know, you're coming off, obviously, back-to-back -back losses. You'd think the captain responds, Barkov. Uh, but again, we talk about, uh, I've talked repeatedly about the, the players that are, you know, in that second line, third line role that have chipped in offensively for Florida uh, throughout the uh, course of the season, including uh Colin White, Lindell, Nick Cousins scored uh, a goal just recently for them. Maybe worth a small shekel or two for a goal prop. And, of course, E2 Cool Mint, Luce Tarina, and we've repeated him repeatedly all year. Uh, those are some options on the Florida side uh, in this one. All right, here we go. Playoff rematch. Carolina Hurricanes, New York Rangers. Uh, Carolina minus 125, uh, road favorites, uh, five and a half the total in this game. Of course, it was a second-round series victory last year in the playoffs for the New York Rangers. Uh, over the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. And this is the first meeting between the two teams since that playoff series. And that's not the reason I'm on Carolina here. It's not. It's the reason I'm on Carolina is you ride the team that's on the kind of win streak they're on. And look, not their best performance, I think, against New Jersey, certainly at the defensive end, but they still found a way to win. 5-4 in a shootout. And that's the scary thing about Carolina. If they need to score five goals to win a game, they can do it. If they need to win a game two to one, three to one, they can do it. I mean, they are definitely a team that is comfortable winning games in multiple fashions. Low scoring, high scoring, special teams reliant, five on five reliant. They can definitely win games in all different facets right now. And they are getting contributions from everybody uh, in the lineup. It has been damn impressive uh, that every night it's someone different. For the Hurricanes, not always Aho and Svechnikov 
and Tara Vine and then Natchez. You know, Derek Stepan is the hero the other night. The old veteran, he gets two goals uh, against New Jersey. You know, it's someone different every night, you know, helping this team win hockey games. It's, you know, it's been very impressive to watch. You know, they're as good a team defensively as there is in the NHL. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and look, they're chomping at the bit to, I think, get this Rangers team for the first time since they lost to them in the playoffs last year. And look, Rangers are playing their better hockey after their swoon that they had the early part of December, late November. Uh, they've actually gone an impressive 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. They beat Florida 5-3 uh, in their last game uh, on New Year's Day. Um, but Carolina is just playing so well, both ends of the ice here. And I think they get this one just playing too well. And the price, again, is reasonable, just like with the New Jersey game. I said Carolina minus 115. The way they're playing right now, it's more than reasonable. This is more than reasonable as well. Uh, Carolina minus 125. And uh, look, I love my Rangers. I've loved this team two years. I backed them a lot. But no siree tonight, uh, not against this Hurricanes uh, outfit uh, at the moment. So I'm on the Caniacs here, minus 125. Alex, Carolina, New York. Yeah, it's interesting because this matchup for years was just rinse and repeat. It was Rangers as a dog, cash, and it was so strange because that streak that they had for a long time was Carolina actually dominating them in play. And there were many multiple instances of where Carolina would outshoot them by a two to one, two and a half to one margin and somehow lose the game. Uh, you know, and I, I guess you know, over the years that was Henrik Lundqvist dominating them, but then it switched over. It was, it was Georgiev. Uh, and Shesterkin in the last couple of years. Things have changed now since 2020. Carolina now won nine uh, of the last 14 meetings between these two teams. And, of course, two of those were playoff series. One was a sweep in, in the bubble, dominating them in, in, in the next round. So it's one of those things now you wonder, you know, the tide has changed. You can't go off of long-term trends. That's why we talk about that with, with playing trends. You can only go a certain stack of, of years, certain stack of meetings before it becomes irrelevant. And I think that's the case now. We're seeing this flip around. Carolina has found a way to beat the Rangers in, in, in recent years, and that's the trend to look at. And this is a cheap price to lay with Carolina, even against the Rangers. I think this is definitely a, a bet on spot for Carolina. And once again, like I said, you want to look at prices now with teams. It's kind of the second half mantra. You look for, you know, is this team going to be priced in this range moving forward? And, you know, should they have already been priced higher in this matchup? I think that's the case for both of these. And, you know, more so with Carolina not being close to, to this kind of a favorite price as they move forward the way that they're winning. So it's in the range uh, where I'm willing to strike and lay it. So I'm going to go minus $1.25 as well, Carolina, Carolina, to win the game. Nothing in regulation because this could be close enough of a battle, even though we haven't seen any overtime since game one of the playoff series last year. This might be a tight battle, but I think Carolina finds their way to get two points. Yeah, I think it's it's just an, it's just enough, a good enough price range, in my opinion, to take Carolina and and, and back them and place that bet and hit hit submit. Uh, you know, because I think if this was even just 15 cents more minus 140, I'd probably be off it. But, uh, you know, minus 125 with what we're seeing right now uh, here with the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Very, very uh, impressive uh, from them. And again, you've got that uh, first crack at the Rangers uh, since uh, the playoff series uh, last year. Just last Pittsburgh. Remember, they played the Rangers for the first time after, since the playoff series. Pittsburgh won that hockey game. So. Uh, they got their uh, small measure uh, of redemption, and Carolina's looking for theirs uh, tonight uh, against this New York Rangers team. To be honest, for as good as the Rangers have been lately, too, they've turned their game around. I think Carolina's form is even better. You want to go against Piotr Kochek? What a goaltending matchup this should be tonight. Igor Shosturkin and Piotr yeah. Kochekov confirmed to be – I'd actually still maybe look at the under, even at five and a half, and I don't say that very often. Uh, but this definitely looks like 2-1-3-1 written all over it. Uh, Shesterkin in net for the Rangers. Pyotr Kochekov has been amazing. Rookie of the month in December, 7-0-1, 1.63 goals against average, 939 save percentage in eight appearances, two shutouts as well. He ended December with five straight wins, two goals or less allowed in all five games. It's a goalie at the top of his form right now for the Carolina Hurricanes, and he is confirmed tonight. And, you know, honestly, that's really the one thing that kind of scares me. He hasn't laid an egg yet. And you think he's kind of due for one at some point. And he's had more time off than he's had, you know, during that great run too. Right. right? Can he yeah. find it again? Yeah. Right. Which which sometimes, you know, that can be more of a deterrent than than, than a plot than a positive. I still like Carolina in this spot, but you know, if they do lose this game, my chances are it probably comes 
uh, with him not playing well, and it's and it's something early, and it's something to note. New, New York four and one to the first period over the last five. These are two teams that don't really get a lot of scoring in, early in the games, but if you're seeing a lot of chances from the Rangers early, maybe you hop on a first period over, hop on a live over because these are short numbers. Uh, that's really going to be their their only way to beat them. If they can find that, you know, Kachekov going to have an off night and they get things rolling, then you might have some spots to look for in game. I still think Carolina finds a way to win. Yeah, definitely. Uh, should be uh, fascinating. I still subscribe to the theory. Like, obviously, with props, Natchez, Nason, um, they are the guys I would consider. And, by the way, still look at Stahl uh, and uh, Martin Nuke and Bost, guys like that on the third line as well for Carolina. They've been good. And I would I would roll – and like I say, even though I like Carolina in the game, doesn't mean I can't bet Ranger props. I'd still stand by maybe giving Lafreniere a shot because this will be his second game back from returning from – the healthy scratch. And I thought it was better from him. Obviously he didn't score, didn't get on the score sheet, but you know, certainly a, someone that's kicking the pants that was needed uh, looking to maybe make amends for uh, that, that uh, healthy scratch and start playing, uh, be more impactful on the ice, uh, be a little bit better. So I uh, wouldn't talk anyone out of that from a prop standpoint either uh, in this. Isn't it crazy that e- we're in a game with Igor Shesterkin, we might be talking about him being the second best goalie in terms of current <laughs> form right now. Yeah. And look, he's been very good. There's been nothing wrong with Shesterkin lately. He's been very good. He's played a lot better than he did earlier in the year, but you can argue Kochekov's form is even better right now uh, in the last several games than Shesterkin. So uh, it should be fun. Looking forward to seeing that game play out. St. Louis, Toronto next up. we got the Leafs minus 270 home favorites, six the total in this game. This just looks like a slam dunk on paper for Toronto. It really does because St. Louis is struggling. They are riddled now with the uh, long-term absences of Ryan O'Reilly, auto parts. Uh, he's going to be out for a long period of time now for the uh, St. Louis Blues. That's a shame because I think they were starting to pedal him in trade discussions as well. And now you're going to have him out until at least mid-February, right around that trade deadline. So that definitely hurts for St. Louis. Vladimir Tarasenko uh, is also going to be out uh, long-term. The only thing that holds me off of the Leafs in some form is you know, St. Louis did lose to this team just recently in St. Louis last week, 5-4 in overtime. It's not like the Leafs had it easy uh, against St. Louis. It was a tough game for them. Um, but they should roll. They really should, Toronto, because St. Louis is just in a world of hurt right now from a personnel standpoint. Not as bad as Vegas, you know, but they're getting to the point where it's it's concerning with who's out. And Tory Krug's still on IR. You got O'Reilly, Tarasenko out now. Scandella on the blue line's out. Uh, Bennington and net has been anything but good lately for them. Uh, 3.16 goals against average, 896 uh, save percentage gives up. Uh, you know, in his last few starts, it's not been good. Uh, he gives up four goals to Minnesota. They lose that game 5 2. He gives up the five spot to Toronto, uh, four to Vegas. Uh, you know, he did have one good start, uh, since uh, right before Christmas. Oh, it was against Chicago, big whoop. So, you know, you basically got to see him. Uh, step up and play better than this. Uh, if, you know, if you were to bet Toronto, this is one of those classic situations. Why lay minus 280? Take three and a half over one minus 145, the team total. I mean, that is the better option. I mean, you're going to save yourself nearly a dollar, more than a dollar of juice. You know, if you go Toronto team total over three and a half at minus 145, uh, as opposed to uh, minus 280 on the money line. I think I lean that. I think I probably will bet that a little bit. Toronto team total. Uh, over three and a half. It's probably what I like the most in this game. I would probably lean full game over as well because you saw the first meeting go over. We've seen four straight head-to-head meetings, Blues and Leafs go over the total. Uh, I cashed an over with the Minnesota-St. Louis game. I'm starting to cash some overs with Toronto right now because I've said this about the Leafs. They get Morgan Riley back, and they're playing more wide open, helter-skelter, run-and-gun hockey. It's crazy. You'd think they get their whole blue line back. They're going to tighten up and be even better defensively. No, they were better and tighter and structured defensively with three fucking starting defensemen out. And now they're getting everybody back, and it's becoming more of a run and gun up and down, and let's let's get some overs going with this Leafs team. It's crazy. It's like it's like working in reverse of what should be happening. Uh, so I like the over here and the Leaf team total over. It'll probably be a split bet between the two for me here. Uh, Alex, what do you think? Blues, Leafs? Yeah, I'm leaning over, too. I'm going to play the first period over, minus one and a half. I'm seeing the, the $1.32 to $1.35. And then I'm going to look for a live over in game. Uh, hope that that drops to five and a half pretty quickly within time. So we're kind of trying to – we're sandwiching time, basically, essentially looking for that first goal to get help us with the first period over, but also looking to 
get uh, enough time to drop that six to a five and a half. I don't, six isn't bad, but I think we have enough time to get five and a half. I don't expect a goal in the first five minutes. So uh, that's the way I'm approaching this here. Like I said, the defensive issues on, on both ends and injuries mounting up. This screams like like a live over game. And like I said, either Toronto puts the screws to them, which they should, or it's one of those games where they lay an egg, and even then they still should be able to find the back of the net. So I, I like goals here. So let's go first period over one and a half. Uh, like I said, I got minus $1.32 at bet online just a few minutes ago, and then we're waiting for that five and a half to drop down anywhere in the minus $1.20 range. I'll be jumping on a live over. Yeah, and a good prop game as well. Let's start with the uh, uh, St. Louis Blues here in this one. Um, Jordan Kyrou's got to be the guy. I mean, offensively, if they're going to be, uh, you know, ex- if they're going to score goals, uh, he's going to be a big part of that. Uh, and it looks like he's, he, you know, he's actually got cold, cooled off a little bit last five games. I could see him chipping in uh, here. Actually, that's a Barbashev, sorry, that's uh, been uh, cold, but he's moving up to the second line. So close shave Barbashev. Ivan Barbashev might be still worth a look. Kairou's been excellent. Kairou going back to December the 15th has seven goals in the last uh, six games for the uh, St. Louis Blues, and he's got a whopping 9, 10, 12 points uh, in those games for Jordan Kairou. So, uh, but keep an eye. There's actually some interesting line or change in the lineup being made by Craig Berube tonight. Of course, obviously with O'Reilly and Tarasenko out, there's going to be some shuffling. Uh, going on so it's good to see how it's going to affect things in terms of the props it looks like Barbashev, shen sod on the uh, second line kairu robert thomas i think he's worth a look number one center now i think he is definitely someone that's going to take this opportunity and run with it uh thomas has uh played well lately for the blues seven points in the last seven games so i think robert thomas is worth a look and then a guy that they think very highly of, young prospect. You know, he's only going to get better in time. He's going to play on the third line tonight, but most importantly, he's going to get on the power play. And I really think you can go bargain bin hunting with this guy for St. Louis tonight. That's Jake. Won't you be my neighbors? Jack neighbors here for the uh, St. Louis Blues. Uh, he's going to get some uh, power play time uh, for them tonight as well. So if you can find anything in that, that regard for neighbors, goal score prop, and maybe also uh, power play point or just a point worth a look. And far as Toronto goes, bunting is, re- is just on a roll right now for the Leafs. You could go in that direction. I know Nylander, Matthews, and Marner are the big three, but I like going for the bargain bin guys. I think bunting is in a good form right now. Engvall's starting to chip in offensively. You could go that route. You could go to I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali. Yarncroke, he's been great lately for the Leafs. And if you really go down the board, don't sleep on Pontus Holmberg, believe it or not, for the Leafs. He's actually started to really get more in, into it offensively. He scored in a recent game for them, and he's plus 525 or so uh, to score a goal in this game for the Leafs. Pontus Holmberg. So it's a really good prop game, sprinkling on a bunch of them here, St. Louis and Toronto tonight. All right, Montreal and Nashville. We've got Nashville minus 240, uh, home favorite, six the total uh, in this game in Music City. Uh, we talked about this ad nauseum, right, for the – uh, and by the way, Ilya Samson off the goalie for the uh, Leafs tonight. Uh, but Montreal, Nashville talked about this at nauseum, Alex. The Laval Rocket Blue Line bringing their traveling road show, traveling shit show right now, if you will, uh, to Nashville. Uh, they are just absolutely, uh, they are just absolutely struggling right now. They are struggling. This uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, Blue Line uh, at the moment. And uh, look, the good news for them is they at least get one of the uh, people back from the infirmary. Uh, tonight, Montreal. David Savard uh, is going to be back on the uh, blue line for them. That'll help for sure. It's a veteran presence. Um, it'll help a little, but again, you're still talking no Matheson, Caden Gooley, who is a young defenseman that's out, has actually been one of the better young defensemen on this team. And outside of Edmondson and Savard, you've still got Baron Harris, Arbor Jackye, Chris Weidman. Very, very tough you know, to trust this Montreal team to keep pucks out of the net. That being said, they get Savard back. And they are playing a Nashville team that you know they can go hot and cold offensively. We know this team one game to the next. You can't always count on them. But they are coming off back-to-back games here. Anaheim and Vegas. Nashville scores four-plus in both games. Ten goals uh, in the last two games combined. You've got to believe Nashville can find the back of the net still here. against. Uh, even though with Savard back, it is still a very much an ailing Canadians blue line. Uh, over three and a half, minus 130. Uh, team total. That's what I'm on here for the uh, Nashville Predators uh, in this one. Very simple, straightforward bet. Something that we've been doing a lot lately is finding ways to bet goals for the opponent specifically 
uh, in games involving the Montreal Canadiens. So uh, Nashville team total over three and a half. I'd have a smaller lean or bet potentially on the full game over as well, but I want to focus more on the Predators uh, team total. What do you think here, Alex? Montreal, Nashville. Yeah, the Habs are probably one more blowout away from trying to get uh, Jose Theodore off of the golf link somewhere in Quebec and putting him back in net. I mean, this is just disastrous right now. Uh, and like I said, it's not just the goaltend. It's, it's in the entire blue line. Like it, it's a collective failure on the back end, and I don't see where they're going to get things turned around. And it's funny because – I feel like I don't play a lot of team totals over, and I think this will be the fourth time this year that I've been on Nashville, a team that I'm not crazy about at all, uh, with a team total over, and I've done well with them so far. So that's right where I'm going as well. Even laying a dollar thirty, that's usually a higher for uh, a little higher than I like to lay with team totals. But like I said, there's no other way option to look at full game over. I don't trust them to get six on their own or seven on their own, and and rely on Montreal to have to get one or two. Just going to stick with Nashville. So we'll go team total over three and a half as well. I know. Are you really Kenny Wu? Are you goading me now to sing a little Neil Diamond? Is that what you're doing with that comment? Montreal Canadians, bad, bad, blue line salvation shit show. Give up the puck and give up the goals like everyone knows. Because everyone knows the Montreal Canadiens traveling blue line shit show. There you go. <laughs> little Neil Diamond. You did it, Kenny Wu. You got it out of me. Appreciate it very much. Good time, dude. Take a break catch our breath and <laughs> hit our first commercial break of the uh, show here uh, for this uh, Tuesday edition. We'll be back and break down the second half of the Tuesday card right after we hear from our great sponsors at Gramco. All right. Whether you or your team's game is on the field, screen, racetrack, or, or the ice, Gramco is for the game. Grown by farmers who spent years developing premium hemp genetics, Gramco provides customers with consistent quality Delta 8 products ready for any occasion. Gramco currently offers numerous Delta 8 products such as vape cartridges, disposable vapes, pre-rolls, gummies, wake and bake coffee, and more. Gramco offers an enjoyable legal high delivered discreetly and directly to you. And is also available at many American retailers as well. To get the best Delta 8 cannabis products on the market shipped quickly and discreetly from Gramco. If you visit www.thegramco.com, use promo code ICEGUYS, you get 25% off of any order, and all orders on the site that are $50 and higher are shipped free with standard shipping. So live elevated with Gramco and check out their wonderful Delta 8 products today. Yeah, I am on one. Not, not, on, not on Gramco, though, honestly, as someone <laughs> in the uh, chat uh, intimated earlier. <laughs> no, not today. It's just it's one of those days. I feel like I've got to try to put myself in a better spirits on a day like today. Like sure. that bummed me out last night, seeing what happened to uh, Hamlin of the Bills. And I feel like I'm trying to go the extra mile to put myself in better mood and better spirits. So I guess that's why you're getting a free concert today, uh, on the, the along with a great analysis of the NHL card right here. Uh, on the Ice Guys show today. But, yeah, check out our great sponsors, Gramco. Uh, for Crystal sure. Crystal Craig with the guys. greatest comment of all time. <laughs> Saying that you're in the Rolling Stones top 200 singers list. I don't know if anybody saw that yesterday. Yeah, that better than Celine Dion, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that list was beyond brutal. That's fucking hilarious. Great great job, Crystal. With <laughs> I don't have her money, though. Could I trade her right. money for mine? Yeah. Oh, We're doing man. okay, but right. not quite that good. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate that, Crystal, uh, yeah. even though I know you're trying to be funny. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, we yeah. move on. Uh, we've got Calgary and Winnipeg. We've got Calgary minus 140 uh, road favorites, uh, five and a half being the uh, total uh, in this one. Um, uh, you know, you look at this Calgary Flames team, they're taking a lot of money here uh, in this game. And I get it. There's people that are buying in. You know, the Flames are trying to get on their first uh, sustained hot streak of the season. They have won three of their last four games uh, but again, a lot of them have been close, right? I mean, they have the loss to Edmonton, the only loss in the last four. But they need overtime to beat Anaheim by a score of 3-2. They beat Seattle 3-2. They beat Vancouver 3-2. to You know, I know they're playing better. Uh, no question about that. Winnipeg, uh, on the flip side, going into this matchup, uh, dealing with uh, their share of uh, issues in terms of health. Uh, Schmidt, Stanley, two blue liners out. Blake Wheeler on IR. Ehlers still on IR. Perfetti's out. Appleton on IR. Still very much a banged-up hockey team uh, going into this home game tonight uh, against the Calgary Flames. But they have won two in a row, uh, beating the Canucks and the Oilers uh, in their last two games. Uh, pretty much got outplayed by the Oilers, but when you got a guy like Connor Hellebuck in net, uh, definitely 
uh, he can get the job done for you. Uh, and he certainly did uh, in that game. I don't have a strong opinion on this game, honestly. It's a pass as of right now until I know for sure who's in net for the uh, Winnipeg Jets because we honestly don't have confirmation yet. And you know how I feel about that being up in the air. If there's even the slightest midget of possibility, it's a big uh, – actually, he has played better. We'll call, call him Dave Riddick today uh, on the uh, show. But if it is him, I'm still hesitant, even though he's been playing better uh, lately. But – uh, right now, I'm just uh, on the fence with this game. Be more maybe of a prop game. Dubé, of course, always someone I'm looking to bet for Calgary. Uh, it goes without saying. Uh, he's been good lately for them. No doubt about that. Blake Coleman's actually stepping it up. So maybe consider uh, his props because he's gotten two points in the last three games, scored a big goal against Vancouver. I think he's due to get on a little bit of a run offensively for the uh, Calgary Flames as well. Uh, for Winnipeg, you know, it's always taken advantage of usually who the guys that are playing with Connor and Dubois. And it looks like tonight, Coolman's, I think, worth a look on the second line. But Christian Reichel, you know, is going to be on the top line tonight for the uh, Winnipeg Jets with Dubois and Connor, who have been two of the best forwards uh, in the NHL. He got called up on Thursday. He played in his first game against Edmonton. He had a point. He had an assist. Uh, he's an absolutely terrific value prop tonight. Uh, in my opinion, Christian Reichel for the Jets. You can get him at plus 600 at Caesars to score a goal tonight. Top line, folks. Top line with Dubois and Connor. And here is Christian Reichel, plus 600 to score a goal tonight at some books. That's like a Mario type of value right there, where they had a, a Mario and they still have him completely mispriced. Fuck, he was plus 500 at bet 365 last night. Top line, just like here with Reichel. For the Winnipeg Jets, top line with Dubois and Connor. He's plus 600 to score a goal. It's a must bet at that price. Win or lose, whether he scores or not, have to bet that price for that guy on the top line tonight. Simple as that. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Calgary, Winnipeg. Yeah, we got a first period over at minus a dollar twenty. This is a great spot for a Calgary team that's gone six and two to the first period over in their last eight road games. Jets uh, four and one their last five. They should have gotten five straight. Obviously, they had the a uh, ton of chances in that game that uh, period ended one nothing against Vancouver, their last home game. So this lines up to be a great spot and a tremendous price. Love this first period over and would look at the full game over as well. These are two teams. I haven't gotten a great feel of them from a side perspective. Winnipeg seemed to have burned me every time I fade them. And then when I, a couple times I backed them, they ended up losing a game in overtime or a shootout. So, uh, I don't think it's going to be that close. I don't look at the draw here. I just like the first period over as an official play and probably would jump in on maybe once I get a full confirmation of goal. We got, do we have a confirmation for both goalies in this one? We have Markstrom for Calgary. We don't have one yet for Winnipeg. Yeah, so see, so if we do get a, a Riddick, Riddick sighting, which Riddick has actually been burning me in the first period overs, but I would look to a full game over with Riddick in net uh, if he is confirmed. But either one get, with the, the other guys in net, I think first period we're going to see some some good balance and good action both ways in the first 20 minutes. All right, batting down the hatches for Alex with his Chicago Blackhawks tonight because the Tampa Bay Lightning are coming into town. Tampa Bay minus 350 uh, road favorites in the Windy City, six and a half being the uh, total uh, in this game. Uh, Lightning have won three in a row since, I don't know what happened to them right before the break, but they had that just that no-show against Toronto where Cooper said, that's the last time we're flying into Toronto ahead, days ahead of the game. You kind of figured that they've had a little too much fun in the big uh, smoke that is Toronto. Uh, and they had a horrible game that night against Dom, tr Dominate. It could have been a lot worse than 4-1 when the Leafs beat them that night. And they really didn't follow it up all that well. They lost to uh, Detroit 7-4 to the very next night. Uh, but a lot of that was Elliott in net was piss poor. I remember that game vividly. And it was not a good start in net for Brian Elliott. A lot of those goals he probably should have. They weren't great defensively either, but uh, certainly Elliott should have stopped a couple of those that went in. Uh, and since then, they have rebounded. Uh, since the Christmas break, they've gone 3-0. and beating Montreal 4-1, Rangers 2-1 in a shootout, and then a 5-3 win against Arizona uh, over the weekend. So uh, very, very impressive here. I'm on Tampa first period puck line. Uh, it goes without saying. Now, I, I look, we know betting this has been just beyond fruitful, beyond profitable, uh, taking these uh, opponents of the Chicago Blackhawks first period puck line, and you're not getting the best value here. We're like around even money now, plus 105 with the first period puck line on Tampa Bay tonight, but still have to bet it here, in my opinion, uh, in this game. And I think the Tampa Bay uh, team total uh, as well, looking at uh, over in this one. If you can get a four, because a lot of books have four and a half, if you can get four at MGM in that minus 120 to minus 125 range, that's something I would bet. If you can find the four, 
a little added security uh, if you can bet over four team total with uh, Tampa Bay uh, in this one tonight against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks and certainly like that team total over as well. We don't have goalies confirmed yet, just projections that it will be Vasilevsky once again for Tampa Bay and Alex Stalock uh, for Chicago. Uh, Tampa Bay, though, is on a back-to-back. They are in Minnesota tomorrow night, which I believe is a TNT game as well, yeah. uh, Lightning and the Wild. So could this be an Elliott sighting? If this is an Elliott sighting, I probably – I probably pump the brakes on the Tampa first period puck line and maybe do more of the team total and the full game over, maybe thinking Chicago could take advantage of that and find the back of the net. But, you know, they might have it farmer in the Dell in net for an opposing team against Chicago. And we still have doubts if Chicago can find the back of the net because look, let's be honest, this Blackhawks offense isn't exactly humming right now. That being said, if there was one prop to bet tonight for Chicago, this is significant. The Greek stallion, uh, Andreas Athanasiu is going from the third line to the top line, it looks like, uh, for this uh, hockey game tonight for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. And I always say you pounce on those situations with a player moving up the lineup. He'll be playing with Domi and Patrick Kane tonight on the top line. So the Greek Stallion, double A, uh, Andreas Athanasiu. I think maybe a little sprinkle with his goal prop tonight. Alex, what do you think here? Lightning Blackhawks. Yeah, I'm taking a shot with this first period over. I see it two at plus 115 or even plus 120. And that's just because, like I said, there's no value right now on Lightning uh, first period puck line. you got a layup price. That's something, and like I said, even though we've been cashing this uh, left and right against Chicago, I just don't feel comfortable laying it. I feel better with that. And I'm looking five and two the last seven meetings uh, to the first period over. I'm also seeing the Lightning uh, on the road. They have gone over uh, the first period in three of the last six games, and in each of those three have been two or more goals. So uh, I have no problem with that. This could be a, a tough spot. We do have confirmation from what I've seen that Staylock's going to start for the Hawks. For Tampa Bay, I would probably guess it's going to be Vasilevsky. And the reason I said it is because when you look tomorrow night, they play uh, against Minnesota. Brian Elliott has a 10-4 and four record against Minnesota. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see Vasilevsky tonight and they give Elliott the start tomorrow against the team he's he's fared well against over his career. And it's interesting you mentioned about them saying, hey, we're not going to stay that long in Toronto anymore because uh, XL Energy Center used to kind of be a house of horrors for them. They like to party there beforehand. That's kind of changed around a little bit in the last couple of years. So I think the focus will be here for both of these games. So if you do like Tampa Bay, in the next 48 hours, I'd say probably look to grab the overnight now with because uh, I'm seeing a line of, of minus 120 at one uh, spot for the game tomorrow. Uh, I would probably look more toward tomorrow's game for Tampa Bay than tonight. But the way I would attack tonight would be first period over two, uh, get as high as plus 120. I think we could see at least Chicago's going to get something rolling. They got to get it done in the first period. I think Tampa could easily come out of this with a 2 1 first period and you know, cash is your uh, puck line and cash it by first period over. All right, so yeah, keep an eye. This is one of those games I'm not moving on it fully until I know who's exactly in net, but I've got all kinds of things that are potential. Maybe a Tampa first period puck line. I'll definitely probably be on Tampa team total over regardless, uh, and I certainly would move on a full game over if it's Elliott as opposed to Vastilevsky uh, in net. Seattle-Edmonton, we've got Edmonton minus 160, uh, home favorites here, six and a half the total uh, in this game. Um, I do have a split bet here on the Kraken, actually. I mean, you don't lose like you did against Edmonton and then play them less than a week later and not be fired up to maybe for, for some payback. That was embarrassing. Kraken know it. That was horrible the way they played. The way they started that game at home against Edmonton, now you get to play them just days later. Uh, you know the Seattle's going to have a little fire in their belly. They damn well should uh, for this hockey game tonight. So I like the first period angle with Seattle tonight, knowing especially that that was what doomed them uh, at home against Edmonton, you can get plus 120 on the Kraken first period money line. Uh, I think that's worth a look uh, in this game and also the full game over. And look, I get it. It's Martin Jones in net. Uh, he's kind of seen his play kind of decline a little bit lately, but he was very good against the Islanders uh, in a 4-1 win on Sunday night. It was a really good team effort, though, defensively. He didn't face a ton of shots. He didn't face a ton of rubber uh, in that game, uh, and that helped him out quite a bit. Uh, I would expect Skinner, Stuart Skinner, to be in net for the Oilers because we, obviously we saw Jack Campbell get the one start against Winnipeg, and he wasn't terrible, but they lose again. You know, same old, same old with Jack Campbell in net, even though that wasn't fully his fault against Winnipeg uh, on Saturday. They are coming off a loss. That's the one thing that does uh, worry you a little bit about Edmonton uh, is, you know, coming off a loss, you'd expect them to want to bounce back. But, you know, Seattle got just 
just throttled by this team, seven to two. And Seattle is still a very impressive nine uh, and six uh, on the road this season. You know, they've not been nearly as good on the road lately as they were earlier in the season, but uh, definitely I think uh, Seattle first period, full game split, money line is worth a look. And the angle is back, folks. I talked about it Friday with the Seattle Edmonton game. Edmonton off an under in their previous game is now 10 and one to the over in the next game. So we've seen, t- uh, yeah, 11 situations where Edmonton has gone under this season. And in the very next game, they've gone 10 and one to the over in those 11 games off and under. So, you know what I'm betting as far as the total goes uh, over six and a half here with Seattle and Edmonton. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Kraken, Oilers. Yeah, this is, other than the Flames, yes, it's probably the first period over I like the most. Uh, got over two at plus 110. You look at, I mean, Edmonton put up the fourth spot on them in the last meeting, but uh, Seattle 6-1 and one overall, uh, their last seven the first period over. And for uh, the Oilers on the road, this is now a streak of five of the last six going over. And in the first four meetings between these two teams, we've seen a minimum of three goals. Uh, in the first period. So I think this could be a back and forth. Like I said, Seattle knows they can't afford to give up goals uh, left and right early in the contest. I think it's going to be a back and forth battle throughout. So I like the, the full game over as well at six and a half. And I really love this first period over two uh, and plus a dollar ten. There you go. All right. So yeah, that is again, 10 and one to the over for the Edmonton Oilers in 11 games this season, often under in their previous game. And that is the angle in play uh, once again here tonight against uh, Seattle. Uh, it's really remarkable that they have not had, they've had one time this year, they've had two consecutive unders. Uh, look, it's not 10 and one. We got a better mortgage on it. Uh, this 10 and one angle uh, to the over tonight, because look, I bet 10 and one angles before in other in NHL and other sports. And that's the night it loses. You know, it's, it's an, it's a, it's definitely percentages are in our favor, uh, but it's not going to be a permanent that it's going to cash at this clip. Uh, no question about that, but you still got to ride it, in my opinion. You're talking about a 10-1 and one betting angle this year with overs for Edmonton games after an under uh, in their previous game. So, uh, yeah, over the total for me, 6.5, and, and I'm also going to look at, obviously, Seattle first period full game money line split as well as a road underdog looking to make amends, save face for just a brutal game uh, against uh, Edmonton last week. As far as props go in this one, uh, there are a bunch that I like because I do think we'll see goals. Pooley RV maybe starting to, can he finally get it going a little bit? Klim Costin has started to chip in a little bit for the Oilers on the third line. Uh, Fogel and Yamamoto are value on the second line. There's some for Seattle that I like. Burakovsky, Beniers, Eberle, anyone on the top line. Wenberg. Uh, how about going down the bargain bin a little bit here? Bjorkstrand and especially the guy they just picked up from Nashville, Ellie Tolvanen. All right, this guy who is now going to get a second shot, second crack at it, fresh start. First game with the Kraken against New York Islanders. Uh, one goal in that game, two shots on goal was noticeable. Uh, definitely, I think my that's actually my favorite prop. Sprong has also been a good value prop lately for the Kraken as well. But definitely, Ellie Tolvin and I think has got a point to prove. You know, it didn't go well and well in Nashville. You can get him at plus four ninety at uh, Caesars to score a goal tonight. Uh, Ellie Tolvin in here for the uh, Kraken. Uh, very live maybe to score a goal tonight in this game. All right, New York Islanders, Vancouver Canucks, even money, minus 110, uh, both sides. Uh, six the total, shaded to the over in this one. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks uh, just continues to be disappointing. That's the best word to sum up what we see from them. They win three in a row. Can they get red hot? And then one step forward, two steps back, like their whole season has been. They win three in a row, and now they've lost two in a row to Winnipeg and Calgary on the road, although very good hockey teams, and they were competitive. Uh, in both of those games. The effort was commendable for Vancouver, but again, not getting results, not finding ways to win. Now they return home, face the Islanders. Canucks just 7-10 and 10 on home ice this year. It's not been good for them this year at Rogers Arena uh, in Vancouver. Uh, that's a horrible home record, 7-10. and 10. Islanders, uh, they had their three-game win streak snapped by Seattle, ran into the Kraken off that embarrassment against Edmonton, and Seattle wasn't messing around. Uh, they played a really strong, complete uh, team game. Uh, in that 4-1 win over the Islanders. I like the Islanders here, minus 110. Bounce back for them. Vancouver, miserable on home ice. Uh, for some reason, they just haven't been able to find ways to win at home consistently. That They have won their last two at home, but one was San Jose. The other was a miracle comeback against Seattle during a time when the Kraken were kind of going through their struggles. 
But after before that, I mean, St. Louis, Winnipeg, Minnesota, you know, average to above average teams. When Vancouver has played them at home, they have not gotten the job done. They have not won. And I think you get the Islanders trying to bounce back after the loss to Seattle the other night. So even money, I like the New York Islanders here. Alex, what do you think? Islanders cannot. Yeah, I thought they were going to, you know, have a, a great game against uh, the Kraken and they laid an egg in that one. I think, yeah, they come out a uh, guns blazing here and laying a dollar ten. I'm going to go right back to the well with the Owls as well. Uh, this definitely just feels like a, a good spot for them in Vancouver. Like I said, to just kind of tread water falling down. I don't really think they're going to make much of, a, of an impact moving forward. But this is important for the Islanders to try to, to get a win and bounce back after uh, what was a, a tough outing against the Owls. Leaning toward the first period over in this one as well was just kind of looking back at uh, some of the Islanders' numbers. Actually, on a four and two, sorry, six and two on the last eight to the first period over. Uh, on the road. So that might be something to look at in game. It's minus a dollar thirty, dollar thirty five. Now I'd probably wait for that to hit even money and jump on with a live first period over that contest. It's not Edmonton, but I'm just looking. They're actually three and one to the over their last four games off and under the New York Islanders. So uh and Vancouver, you know, at home they they have been an over machine. Look at the look at these home games for Vancouver. Six two, six five, five one, five one Four, uh, yeah, there's been it's been over Palooza for Vancouver. On I might add that over too because I'm also looking at the series history. I might play over six as well. Four straight overs with Islanders versus Canucks actually uh, in the series history. Four three five four six three four three uh, were the scores uh, in those games. So I think the over might be a bet for me too in this one. Islanders and Crack. It looks like Spencer Martin confirmed in net for the uh, Canucks. He's faced a lot of rubber, played a lot of games. He's done the best he absolutely could, but you're starting to see him, again, not ne necessarily play quite as well uh, the last, I would say, five or six starts. Should be Sorokin, uh, Ilya Sorokin for the New York Islanders, but it hasn't been uh, confirmed yet uh, in this one. If All you right, want to go back a ways with that first period trend, nine and three the last 12 meetings to the over. Wow, there we go. So nine and three first period over in the last 12 head-to-head uh, -head meetings with uh, these uh, two teams. Uh, as far as props, uh, keep an eye on a uh, Sheldon Dreis here for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. He's moving up to the second line. There could be some value there. Sheldon Dreis up to the uh, second line for them. Uh, the Islanders, uh, Bailey. Hudson Fashing is the one. Actually, keep an eye on this kid. He's getting the top line here tonight for the uh, New York Islanders. Sabres organization before didn't pan out there, but he's playing with Bailey and Barzal uh, on the uh, top line for the uh uh, New York Islanders. And if you look at the way he's played here, he's two points in the last three games, noticeable. He's getting shots on goal. He's getting chances. So a little Hudson fashing uh, uh, goal scorer prop bet, a little value there for sure uh, with him tonight playing on that uh, top line, plus 625 at Caesars. Again, you're talking about a top line player getting plus 625 uh, to score a goal uh, for the Islanders tonight. All right, final game of this massive, and I mean massive, Tuesday card. Uh, Dallas Stars, LA Kings. Uh, we've got Dallas minus 120 uh, road favorites. Uh, the total in this one sitting at six pretty much uh, across the board. Uh, you've got Dallas, certainly uh, a team that is, you know, both of these teams are right in, in battles to make playoff spots for sure. Uh, similar records, 21 wins for the Kings, 23 wins for the Dallas Stars. Dallas has won four in a row, uh, beating Montreal, Nashville, Minnesota, and San Jose. Uh, you know, during that stretch, you know, Nashville's kind of media, really only one quality team that they beat, and that's Minnesota. L.A. coming off a 4-2 loss uh, to the Philadelphia Flyers at home. I actually think their game was solid, but they couldn't get the puck past Airson uh, of the Flyers, who, as we mentioned when we talked Philadelphia uh, earlier in the show, uh, this team is playing uh, some – he's been playing some better hockey in net lately uh, for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. L.A. just could not solve him uh, in that game. Uh, Dallas has actually had a very good run of it against L.A. head-to-head, 8-2 -head, and two in the last 10 meetings, including uh, two straight uh, between these two teams. Uh, Dallas, uh, on the road, has been very good, actually, 12-8. and eight. They've actually got more road wins than home wins. But L.A. starting to get their game going. I like the way they've played. They're 6-2 and uh, two in their last eight games. They're coming off a loss. I think they'll play better. This is just not a game I'm going to get involved in. I think it's a bet-on versus a bet-on here uh, in this one. I'd lean to the Kings. I'm always – kind of tempted when I see the Kings as a home underdog or even money like this, I'd lean slightly to LA, but I'm probably going to look more at props uh, in this game. And for me, there's a lot of good ones here, potentially this not may not be necessarily high scoring, but Velarde's heating up again. 
And look who's finally, someone's getting a clue. I don't know if it's McClellan or it's the GM from upstairs telling him to do this, but they're moving Quentin Byfield finally to a line that he's going to get minutes and he's going to get opportunity yeah. and he's going to be able to play with good players. Quentin Byfield with Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe on the top line tonight uh, for the LA Kings. About fucking time. He can't get better. He can't develop on the fourth line. That's insane. That's asinine yeah. what yeah. they've been doing with this kid for the longest time. It's time you move him up to the top line. Let him get some opportunity for crying out loud. Eight minutes a night's not going to get him to be the NHL player you want him to be. That's ridiculous. Nine minutes. That's all he was playing in the first two games after the Christmas break. But now put him on the top line now, which is good. And look, you know, let's see how he fares. Let's not forget, down in the AHL, he had nine goals and 15 points in 16 games. He's only got the three assists at the NHL level this year. But you're not going to be able to chip in a whole lot offensively when you're buried on the fourth line. So Byfield gets that opportunity tonight with Kopitar uh, and with Kempe. And you know what that means. It means bargain bin time for yours truly on the player prop with Quinton Byfield uh, here in this game tonight. Uh, plus four. 40 uh, up to plus 550 at Caesars uh, to score a goal tonight for the LA Kings. Great. We've got a lot of these good situations. These guys that are on the top line that are getting these plus five, 600 prices to score. And this is another one here with Quinton Byfield, of the LA Kings. Uh, what do you think here, Alex Dallas and LA? Yeah, this is going to be a, a fun game. And uh, someone mentioned in the chat, actually someone mentioned on Twitter, I'll give a credit to Steve Overbay on, on our Twitter. who mentioned about the dad's trip. For Dallas, teams that are on parent trips this year, nine and two so far. Uh, wow. I know we watched a couple of, I know St. Louis had the mom's trip against Chicago recently, and that was a huge blowout for them. And, uh, you know, we've seen in these interviews where they mentioned, you know, that does get them geared up, especially when you're just going through kind of the monotonous middle of the year. You know, you have something thrown in like this, especially around the holiday time. These little things can make a difference. You know, not necessarily at the beginning or the end of the year, but, you know, it, it, it helps kind of pass the time and, 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 you know, make things a little tighter and just show more of a team bond, uh, you know, going through the dog days. And so I, I, I do kind of look at that as something that's not the, the strongest of handicaps, but it's definitely something that is noteworthy in my opinion. And you know, Dallas is playing good hockey right now. I've said this before on the show where I think this is now's the time where we see Dallas really emerge and take control and take their position in this central division and this Western conference. So playing against division and conference opponents, I think will be of an utmost importance and, and playing a, a team like LA who I think in due time will still find themselves in the fight. But uh, you know, like I said, some of their wins haven't been as, as super spectacular. Same thing with Dallas, but Jake Ottinger in that at a price minus a dollar 20, and Dallas has won five of the last six meetings and six of the last seven in L.A. Give me the stars here, minus $1.20. All right, Dallas minus 120 here for Alex in the nightcap against L.A. Uh, in this one, that is a great stat about the 9-2 and two record for teams where either the moms or the dads have been on the trip uh, with the uh, team. And, of course, they, the teams are going to want to win in these situations. They don't want to, you know, do you think they want to disappoint mom and dad with them in attendance? No, of course not. You want to play your best. You want to put a put a win on the board for them. You don't want to disappoint them, uh, obviously. So it, it, you get great utmost uh, effort, definitely, in these kind of spots. Uh, and so that favors Dallas on this uh, dad's trip here uh, tonight uh, against the uh, LA Kings uh, in this one. Should be a good game there uh, in the uh, late night hours. Yeah, the Pavelski, I don't mind that. Pavelski to score a goal, point props, power play point props. He signed the contract. Usually I like that as a betting angle yeah. that they want to show, hey, we're worth it. You made the right decision investing in me for the next however number of years. So don't be surprised if, you know, Joe Pavelski has a good game tonight for the uh, for the uh, Dallas Stars. And that's a great point. Someone did. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't mention it in that Leafs Blues game. But, yeah, Callie Rosen plus 1,200. Three straight goals from the blue line for this guy. That is something you got to look at. I mean, it's I don't know if he's going to keep doing this. This is out of nowhere, essentially. And here he is all of a sudden. Well, he's getting more ice time because of the injury to Krug. And plus 1,200 to score a goal. Callie Rosen, blue liner for the uh, St. Louis Blues. And guess what? Facing Toronto, team he used, organization he used to be in for a period of time as well. Uh, so, yeah, Callie Rosen, excellent call there, Olaf. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, find there. An excellent call because I – I do know he, that Rosen's been uh, heating up for the Blues, and that is uh, incredible value there, uh, so worth a look as well. All right, that's the Tuesday card. We thank everyone for joining us. Hit the like button. Those of you watching on YouTube, almost hit 300 live views today. Incredible. Uh, one of our strongest live show turnouts in terms of live viewers, so we appreciate it. 
Make sure you sign up at patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 a month. Daily ice guys show betting card posted there, goalie charts, totals, charts, power ratings, and more. Lots of bonus content coming as well. Patreon.com slash ice guys, just $10 a month. We will have best bets coming up right after we hear from Manscaped. Support for the Ice Guys is brought to you by Manscaped, our good friends at Manscaped, who are the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, courtesy of the Ice Guys. Get 20% off of any purchase and free worldwide shipping with the promo code ice guys that's promo code ice guys all one word i c e g u y s at manscape.com if my math is correct that's about 400 million balls that you can help preserve with manscape.com using the promo code ice guys you get the performance package 4.0 it is a game changer the lawnmower 4.0 it takes care of this among other things uh, it'll keep you uh, trim uh, as can be uh, the lawnmower 4.0 waterproof same thing with the weed whacker which takes care of your ear hair nose hair i mean nose hair in particular you know i'm getting up there in age and nose hair is becoming uh, definitely more of an issue this will take care of it it feels like someone's tickling the inside of your nostrils sometimes it pisses the hell out of me it bothers me i need to take care of that shit this will take care of it for you the weed whacker uh, make uh, part of the package that you get with your Manscaped purchase and the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. You also get the ball toner. You also get the ball deodorant. Keep you uh, smelling good and looking good and feeling good down in the nether regions. This package is really going to make you feel good and and look good and look better. Slim, trim, that's what it's all about. And Manscaped.com can help you out with that so make sure you take advantage of this manscape.com get 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code ice guys at manscape.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscape.com and use the promo code ice guys unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped All right, we are back. Not a bad suggestions in the chat. Someone saying Brandon Hagel returns to Chicago anytime goal. And we've mentioned Hagel uh, a lot this true. year uh, on the show. Yeah, no doubt. I think that's a, that's a solid look. And the only reason I didn't mention it is because uh, not getting the price you are on some of these other bargain bin players that I'm looking at. Like you can get pretty much plus 200, plus 240 tops on Hagel. Still not bad, but yeah. uh, definitely uh, looking at uh, better prices, but certainly a Makes sense, uh, you know, conceptually that Hagel want to play well tonight. That you know, might like, be that might be a kind of guy you want to throw in if you're looking for same team parlay fodder. Maybe throw in a would you would you suggest that with those mid range guys? Maybe throw the throw them into a mix with a side or a total for people who like to play those same game parlays. Same game parlays, yeah, exactly. Throw that in there, absolutely. Throw that in. There's gonna be a few games. These games that I like the overs in, I'll be doing some same game parlays. I usually do every night. Uh, haven't hit a ton of them, not many, but. Uh, you're just putting a you know a couple bucks in play, and just they're fun bets. That's exactly what they are. You don't expect to cash them routinely, uh, but they are just fun extra bets you can place. Uh, the bets that we're about to mention, they're not just little fun extra bets. They are bets that we're very confident in. It's best bet time here on the Tuesday edition of the Ice Guys. Alex, we'll start with you. What do you like for best bet? Yeah, we'll go up to the frozen tundra up north. We're going to go with Calgary, Winnipeg. Go first period over one and a half minus a dollar twenty. Man, do I miss seeing those prices on a regular night? Uh, this is a, a great price and, and some great trends to back it. Calgary seven and two to the first period over the last nine road games. Winnipeg six and three to the first period over in the last nine home games, and five and two in the last seven head-to-head -head meetings. So let's go first period over one and a half minus a dollar twenty with the Flames and Jets tonight. It's my best bet for Tuesday. All right, Flames and Jets over one and a half first period, a very rare bargain-filled first period uh, price and number for Alex with Calgary Winnipeg. First period over for Alex with his uh, best bet. Uh, my best bet for this card, a 10 and one angle. We cashed a best bet winner with it on Friday night show. We're going right back to it tonight. Seattle Edmonton over six and a half minus 120. There was a bunch of options for best bet tonight. So hopefully we've got the right one here. Kraken Oilers. Over six and a half, minus 120. I think we'll see goals here tonight. Once again, 
10 and one angle for the Edmonton Oilers, 10 and one to the over in 11 games this season, following an under in their previous game. Hopefully that trend rolls along tonight. Seattle, Edmonton, over six and a half for my best bet for this Tuesday card. And that'll wrap up this edition of the Ice Guys. Thanks to everyone in the chat for joining us. Hit the like button uh, on the way out. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex B. Smith, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Tuesday night. Enjoy the massive NHL card and good luck. And we will be back tomorrow on Wednesday for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. (laughs) 